Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. My name is Angel and I realized that I kind of blend in with the background a little bit so super sorry. Black is my favorite color to wear. I don't know what to tell you. Today is going to be a little bit different. Today, we're going to read some Let's Not Meet stories from Reddit. Um, I have a couple favorite YouTubers that I follow that read some of these stories, and they creep me out every single time. So we're going to pick some of the newest ones and read them. Before we hop into today's video, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. All of my socials, as well as the stories that we read today, will be linked down in the description box below. And let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now, I would like like to start by saying um I am home alone currently and it's eight o'clock at night I'm 29 years old and I'm scared of the dark so will I be sleeping tonight probably not this first one is called a week ago I had a man in my home I never thought I'd be sharing my story here I always figured I'd be one of those readers lurking in the shadows devouring the terrifying tales of others with a mix of morbid fascination and relief that it wasn't happening to me but here I am sitting at my keyboard, fingers trembling, heart racing, recounting the night I'll never forget. It was a typical Friday evening, the kind where you just want to unwind after a long week of work. I had settled onto the couch with a bowl of popcorn and a cheesy horror movie playing in the background. My cat, Luna, curled up beside me, purring softly as she dozed off. The world outside was quiet, peaceful even. Or so I thought. Suddenly, a sound shattered the tranquility, a sharp crack that echoed through the silence like a gunshot. I froze, popcorn forgotten, as a chill crawled down my spine. Luna bolted upright, ears twitching nervously. I told myself it was just a branch snapping in the wind, or maybe the house settling, but deep down, I knew it was something else. My heart pounding in my chest, I tiptoed to the window, peering out into the darkness. At first, I saw nothing but the swaying trees and the gentle glow of the streetlights. But then, movement. A shadow flitting between the bushes, stealthy and silent. Panic seized me. I stumbled back from the window, my mind racing with possibilities. Before I could even process what was happening, the front door exploded inward with a deafening crash. Splinters flew through the air as a figure burst into the room, wild-eyed and frenzied. My scream was drowned out by the chaos as the intruder lunged towards me, a deranged grin splitting his face. It was a sight straight from a nightmare. Pale skin stretched taut over sharp bones, eyes bloodshot and manic, lips twisted into a grotesque smirk. But it was his aura of madness that chilled me to the bone, a tangible force that seemed to fill the room with an icy dread. I stumbled backward, tripping over the coffee table in my haste to escape. But he was faster, closing the distance with unnatural speed. His hands reached out, fingers curled into claws as he grabbed hold of my wrist with a strength that defied logic. Pain exploded through my arm as his nails dug into my flesh, drawing blood. Desperation lent me strength, and I fought back with everything I had. I kicked and screamed, clawing at his face in a frantic bit of freedom. But no matter how hard I hit, he barely reacted. With a cruel laugh, he twisted my arm behind my back, pinning me against the wall with a bone-crushing grip. Through the haze of fear and agony, I glimpsed something glinting in his other hand, a gleaming blade stained with rust and dry blood. My stomach churned at the sight. I closed my eyes tightly and curled up as much as I could. But then, as suddenly as he appeared, he was gone. Released from his grasp, I crumbled to the floor, gasping for breath as I watched him disappear into the night, leaving behind nothing but destruction and terror in his wake. The police arrived soon after their questions, a blur as I struggled to make sense of what happened. They searched the house from top to bottom, but there was no sign of the intruder. No trace of his presence except for the lingering stench of fear that clung to the air like a suffocating fog. In the days that followed, I tried to convince myself that it had all been a fever dream, a hallucination born of stress and exhaustion. But the bruises on my body and the shattered remnants of my home told a different story, one of real, tangible horror that I could never forget. And though I pray that I'll never encounter him again, a part of me knows that some nightmares never truly end. So please, dear reader, heed my warning and hold your loved ones close, for there are monsters lurking in the shadows, waiting to strike you when you least expect it. And once they have you in their sights, there is no telling what other horrors await. Let's not meet again. Ooh, that is so terrifying. Now, I live in an apartment complex, so there are noises around here all 
the time. For the first couple of years that we lived here, there would constantly be people outside like yelling at each other, fighting. I'm pretty sure there was at least one or two times where a gun was pulled. So that was cool. And luckily now things are really quiet, but that doesn't mean I don't get spooked at literally every single noise that I hear from the outside. This next one is called, he wanted me to drive him to a place that doesn't exist. This week has been hectic. Same. My three kids have the flu. Oldest was first, then my younger two caught it. After a visit to the clinic, I was heading to the CVS down the street from our house for their prescriptions. I decided last minute to drop my kids off at home with their dad so they could rest and I could go inside the store to pick up some Pedialyte. I consider our neighborhood to be safe. I've taken walks after dark and never felt afraid. Most of our neighbors are older folks who have lived there over a decade. When I pulled up to the CVS, I parked on the side parallel to our street. It's darker on that side, but the entrance was right around the corner and very well lit. There was a man standing outside. He walked in front of my car and I could hear him talking, but my music was kind of loud. I figured he was on his phone or something. No real red flags yet. My husband called me as the man walked back towards the corner adjacent to the entrance. I got out of my car, still on the phone, telling my husband, yeah, kiddos have the flu. I'm picking up medicine at the CVS, etc. In a very pleasant voice, the man says to me, hey, I got a question for you. You know where Main Street is? I, assuming he is asking for directions or the location of something, tell him I do. I'm still holding my phone to the ear. It's in a bright pink case, so I'm sure he could see it. Now this man is standing directly in front of me. There's a pillar and a trash can behind him. Around the corner is a propane cage and a red box. Does anybody even use red box? I feel like I still see them all the time. I just need to know who's using them. Getting past him would put me in arm's reach. Next, he asked for a ride there. That's bold. But I guess if you have bad intentions, you don't care. To a homeless shelter. It's very cold outside and he doesn't want to freeze. I empathize with him but said I couldn't. I offered to buy him gloves and or a blanket and to ask an employee in the store if they could assist in finding him a ride. Sweet baby Jesus, this guy's face instantly changed to pure rage. Then right back to pleasant. Well, you know what happens to homeless people stuck outside? You're going to help me. It's right down the street. I'm standing there unsure what to do. My husband is on the phone asking what's going on. I gently tell the man that I don't feel comfortable doing that and that I have the flu. I don't. And my husband is on the phone with me. I don't care about the flu. Now he's getting more angry and not moving away from my route into the store. I didn't want to turn my back on him to go back to my car, which was several feet away in the dark. While this guy's glaring at me, I decide to quickly walk past him. I had my mask from the clinic in my jacket pocket, so I pulled that out and held it in front of me while moving towards the trash can. He looked disgusted but kept telling me I need to give him a ride. It's right down the street. He insisted. But I know where that street is, and it's not as close as he says. He tried to guilt me, and his words felt threatening, but he didn't actually threaten me verbally. Once I was around the corner, I rushed into the store straight to the pharmacy. My husband said he's calling the police. He heard the way the man was talking to me and said to stay in the store. My knees were shaking. I'm not usually the type to be so afraid when confronted. When I got to the pharmacy, I interrupted the pharmacist and a customer apologizing, then told them what happened. The pharmacist sent the store manager outside, tall guy with a long beard. Look like he doesn't take crap from people. Love having a manager like that. Then the police had already arrived. The man was told to leave, which he did momentarily. He came back inside the store yelling obscenities and something about me. Now the store manager has told him to get the F out. He's trespassing on the property. The cop came back to talk to me and told me she has arrested him many times. He's loud and likes to yell at people, but he isn't violent. The pharmacist had me hiding behind the screen where they give vaccines and left the half door to the pharmacy cracked open in case I needed to get out of there. The cop had told me this guy's first and last name, as did the store manager. The prescriptions are finally filled. Do you not just take like cold medicine for the flu? Do you have to get prescriptions? And I leave the store. The police parked next to my car to keep an eye on me. Oh, and the man refused a ride from the cop to the shelter. Later, I looked him up. His name is Unique, so he was easy to find online. Surprise, surprise, he has a long record spanning three states and several countries. Tons of public intoxication charges, DUIs, urinating in public, 
assault and battery, and indecent exposure. I also looked up the homeless shelter. Yeah, as I thought, there isn't one where he wanted me to take him, but that area is super sketchy. Earlier today, I told the corner store across from the CVS and told my friend, the overnight shift employee, what happened. She kicks him out of the store and calls the police every time she sees him because he yells and threatens customers, but he always takes off before the police arrive. I know I could have handled that better, but I was blindsided by his instant shift from pleasant to filled with rage. Big thank you to the pharmacy team who kept me safe and the store manager for confronting the creep. They didn't have to do all of that and I'm thankful my husband recognized I was in an unsafe situation over the phone. This man is still out there somewhere in my area. That is awful. That is terrifying. Like I genuinely don't care how safe I think an area is. If it's past dark, I you will never find me at a CVS or a Walgreens. I'm sorry. Okay, let's read one more. This one is called Roommate from Hell. Never move in with a man or woman you've never personally known. But also just don't move in with someone you personally know either. That usually doesn't end up very well. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next one. He acts like I haven't paid attention to him all day. I've been not even filming for 20 minutes. I got a roommate from hell this way. The man tortured me psychologically when I turned his sexual advances down, then stole thousands of dollars from me over time, even used my own Amazon account to open up an account. He got some of my personal info like social, etc. as well. Once I left after calling the cops to help me leave, he showed up at the Apple store I was at just a day after I left. Even though I left to go live on the streets, no family or friends as I was severely abused as a kid. I've been on my own since 14 actually, so I'm accustomed to surviving on the streets for periods of time. I was a million times happier than I ever was in his nice apartment surrounded by nice things and a fancy car. I felt so relieved even just living in a concrete garage. I was a million times happier sleeping on concrete with a pillow made of towel and a tiny little blanket in the cold and heat than I ever was living there with him. He spent his time psychologically torturing me and I don't regret leaving it all. All right, let's see what happened. He would bang on the wall across from mine every morning and late at night to startle me awake. He'd throw pebbles or tap on my window in the middle of the night to scare me and keep me on edge. He'd give me weird little candies and teddy bears as if we were dating, even ordered stalkerish love items for my, from my own Amazon account. Who the F spends this much on a Christmas ornament that says, I'll always love you and follow you? or something along those lines, yikes. If I'd go to the restroom, he'd run and kick his foot under the door so loudly and suddenly that it sounded like a door being kicked down. He'd steal my items if I left them alone for even a second so I'd have no way to go out if I had plans. Then he'd put them back once I mentioned them or when it was too late for me to leave for my plans. He kept me home this way. If I got any mail or a package, he'd interrogate me. What did you order? I need to know. Like he owned me or something. Towards the end, I was leaning furniture up against the door because he picked my bedroom lock while I was gone. And when I'd wake up, sometimes there was stuff missing or moved in odd ways. So I knew he was creeping around while I was asleep. He was an absolute freak. I wouldn't put anything past him since he showed me how psychotic he was. If I was happy or in a good mood, he'd start criticizing and nitpicking at my body, hair, face, behavior, voice, etc. Anything he thought I was insecure about. I even developed an ED because he always did this and mocked slash laughed at me when I would make her eat food. Anytime I'd leave my bedroom, he would rush out of his room to stand right behind me or near me like a weird little dog that follows you around panting. He'd even pee in my hair products, skin products, vitamins, etc. What? He'd throw out food that I just bought, steal my cash, and even use my debit cards. He even ordered 30 to 40 items off of my Amazon account without my knowledge or consent. It was the strangest thing. If anyone has dealt with this, they'd go insane. I still have trouble believing this stuff happened as it was so crazy to even think about that someone is that crazy to do this. That is absolutely insane. When I lived with my best friend, 
a really long time ago, like it was almost right outside of high school. We lived in her family's basement and her family was like her mom, her stepdad, and then two little sisters and a little brother. And the two little sisters were like old enough to go to school and have friends. So like they would have friends over all the time. And like we did not like have a door that would lock or we could lock from the outside instead of just from the inside. And literally my stuff would just be ransacked all the time all the time. I always say don't get a roommate unless it is your significant other and you are planning on like spending the rest of your lives with them. Because if you move in and something goes wrong, that friendship is over. I definitely do not talk to the my friend from high school anymore after moving out. So just usually doesn't end very well. Anyways, that is it for today's video. What did we think about reading Let's Not Meet stories? Um, I kind of want to integrate these and maybe some like scary little ghost stories in. I know it's February, but I am such a Halloween person. Like I am ready. I'm ready for Halloween. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you made it to the end, thank you so much. Feel free to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it so I know to keep making videos like these. Um, if you guys have any stories that you see on Reddit that you want me to read, feel free to um, DM me the link. Like I said, all of my social media is in the description box below. Um, or you can leave the link in the comments below. It's not going to post as a link, but I can copy and paste. 